Hey guys, down here at the field again today, we're going to talk through everything to do with the drop kick, hand placement, how we want to be making contact with the ball, the timing of the ball drop, and all the different types of kicks that we can use in the game. In the game of sevens, obviously with kicking the ball off and trying to get the ball back, also in fifteens, taking shots at goal, drop kicks in games, and also long kickoffs, short kickoffs, flop kickoffs, all the different types of kickoffs that we can do with the rugby ball when it comes to the drop kick. First thing we want to cover off is how we want our hands on the rugby ball. Now I encourage having the hands near the top of the ball, reason being is if they're too low, generally we raise the ball and funny things happen, the ball twists, we don't get the timing quite right. So having your hands near the top of the ball just means that we can let the ball go with both hands at the same time and get that nice true straight ball drop. One thing I would suggest is just playing around with this right hand. If I'm a right foot kicker, sometimes it might feel a little bit more comfortable being up the back of the ball rather than being perfectly side on. So for me, I always felt if I was just uh, covering the back part of the ball as well with that right hand, I just had a little bit more control. I could guide that ball out to where I wanted, especially with the conversion kick, rather than being more front on, I was able to guide that ball out, push it out, but still get that perfect ball drop. So with any of the drop kicks we do want to try and get that square bounce of the rugby ball. If we let the ball go and alter the angle of the ball, as the ball drops and starts to turn away, it makes it really hard and inconsistent with the strike we want to get on the rugby ball. So it's, that's why it's so important, doesn't matter whether we're looking for distance or trying to get that nice uh, raise of the ball so that we can get hang time for our kickoffs. Having a square ball drop and getting that square bounce is so crucial to how we make contact with the ball. Really important to check your ground when you do your ball drop, so make sure you've got a nice, strong, firm bit of ground that's going to give you that true bounce. Otherwise, if you find a wet patch, sometimes the ball just drops and sinks. There's no way that we can get a nice strike on that ball. So always check your ground. It only takes a couple of seconds, but it's going to give you that good confidence so you can get a good connection, plus have a really a good ball drop that you can really trust. Before we go too much further, make sure you do get through a really good warm up, have your body ready to go for kicking. I always tell my kickers before we even get into any drop kicks or any reps, make sure you look like a kicker, feel like a kicker. If our body is really engaged and ready to fire and get some energy through the ball, we're going to have a much better kicking session. So we've found ourselves a net and the reason being is I want to talk through the angle that we come into the ball. For me when I was looking for my height kickoffs, I was a little bit square, so around about 30 degrees. When I was taking a conversion or looking to go slightly deeper, I'd just take myself out to 45 degrees which allowed me to get a little bit more angle on the ball, store more energy but also really whip through the ball and get a little bit more power. The reason why we're at 30 degrees is so that I can stay a little bit more front on and the follow through is more of an uplift so we want our momentum going up rather than too much forward with momentum. So I'm going to talk through the two different styles of kicks now and show you the difference in my approach. So these first two kicks I'm looking for height, so I'm at that 30 degree angle. My follow through needs to have uplift in it, I need to let myself get up through the ball so that we can get height and hang time on the kick. So I'm going to set myself at around about that 30 degrees, nice slow and control but really look through that height. So same again, I really felt good in that kick, nice straight ball drop, which allowed me to get up through the ball, get nice and high in the follow through. Good strike. So on these two kicks now we're going to look for a little bit more distance. So I'm just going to take myself from 30 degrees to 45 degrees. This is going to allow me to keep my lead shoulder really engaged and down. It means that when I get through the ball I'm focusing on momentum getting through to target and taking my body forward. Remember for the height kick we wanted that real uplift. For this kick we really want that forward momentum, win that half metre post impact with the ball. So again, be really positive with this lead shoulder, keep it down rather than opening up for that hang time, really focus on keeping that momentum forward and down. We're going to talk about momentum now. For me, when we're looking for that conversion kick, really liking to take the energy through the ball, getting through to target for those conversions from the sideline or a deep kickoff. We have to win the momentum pre-ball, so it's really important to have good energy, come into the ball really positive, 
body weight forward getting through the ball. Once we've made impact, it's really important to win this half meter past the ball as well, so get our body weight going through to target. Quite often we see a try scored in sevens directly under the post, we've got a drop kick, and the kicker comes in and just sits on the kick, leans back, and ends up missing that really easy conversion. It's because we've switched off all that energy, we've gone looking for the ball. What happens is when our eyes look for the ball and we check out of the kick early, it's just like when you're vacuuming and someone pulls the cord out of the wall, everything stops, all the good stuff that is happening all stops at that point. So it's really important when the momentum pre-ball, when the momentum post-ball, and we've got all that good energy, even if our ball drop is slightly ugly, we'll still get the ball going where we want it to. So now we've got two kicks that we're going to take. We've got G there in the distance for our kickoff. That's the kick I need to put height and hang time on it. So I need an uplift follow through. Then we're going to take a shot at goal. The target for that shot at goal is slightly different. So that bright tree that you can see in the background, that's the target we're going through. That's when I'm going to use my momentum shift, get through the ball, 45 degree drop kick style. So let's get through the two kicks now. First one I'm looking for is this kickoff to G. Height and hang time. Ground check as always, but I'm really looking to get up, uplift, follow through through the ball, 30 degrees. Let's get some hang time on this kickoff. Slightly deep, but I had, had some nice hang time. Now we're looking through the conversion kick, so 45 degrees. I'm focusing on keeping the shoulder more engaged, getting through the ball, momentum follow through rather than uplift follow through. My target is that tree in the background. Let's really get through this ball. Slight hook on it, but I really got my momentum going forward, which saved the kick even though my ball drop wasn't perfect. So we're here at halfway. You can see the scuff marks as there always is around halfway. We're going to go through four different kicks. So the deep kickoff that we want to try get near their 22 and close to the sideline, distance and hang time. The sideline kick just over the 10 metre line where we really need to get good uplift but strike the ball with good power so it has hang time but also gets over to the sideline. We bring it in 15 metres which is slightly my favourite kick where you can just really trust timing. Good uplift, good hang time and then just the flop kick so just trying to get the ball 11, 12 metres with good timing. To achieve those height kicks Quite often people try to scoop the ball and, and really like their footers like a digger try to scoop the ball, bend their knee to get that height. We have to allow this ball to bounce and get up and then hit it with that nice big strong foot, plantar flex, point the toes nice and hard. That way we get that good thud through the ball and we don't have a weak floppy foot or as I call it trout foot. Uh, if we keep that foot nice and hard it means that we can trust timing, trust our ball drop, get that good extension out the back of the kick and then get that uplift with a good strong solid foot. So quite often with that scoop foot the other thing that happens is we get knee bend and then our hips aren't in that nice strong position. So by straightening out my leg plus pointing my toes you can see that my hips are in a really strong position, everything's locked out and just like a golf club that's where we're nice and strong and powerful. We have to trust the ball drop so that means I have to be patient, let that ball get to the height of its drop and come through it with that big hard locked up foot, locked up uh, plantar flex foot rather than that scoop weak foot that's just got no energy behind it. So stay strong, trust your ball drop, get up through the ball and have that nice uplift feeling. First kick, G's nice and deep, around about the 22 so I've really got to get a nice strike on this. Momentum's the key for this kick, so 45 degree, stay over the ball so the ball does get there. Let's get a nice strike. Yeah, boys! Sideline kick now, so G's just, just past the 10 metre line. What I'm going to do is I still need a little bit of momentum, but it's more about that uplift. So trust timing, slightly squarer, get it across to that sideline. Nice hang time. Plenty of time for our chaser to get there. Next one G, 15. So now the 15 metre kick, this was my favourite because you can really just trust timing, doesn't have to be too forced, you don't need all that energy to get it too much distance. So let the ball get up, it's really good for those chasers because all that hang time they can just change their lines, get up and contest. So again, ground check, trust that ball, 
Gonna try to stay nice and relaxed on this kick and just follow through with that nice uplift. So now G's just 12 metres, 11 metres. With this one, it's really important that the, t the tendency is to want to try a scoop because it's slightly tighter and the target is right there for us. I think it's better to be a little bit more patient but a slightly slower with your leg coming through. Still be nice and hard so we do just get that nice hang time. For me, again, 30 degrees off the target. Let that ball get up and just nice little strike on it. Again, with these kickoffs that are for height and hang time, the person chasing can adjust. They don't have to be perfect, so don't get too worried about your, hitting your target. It's all about giving that opportunity for the chaser. Good hang time, good strike. It's always going to be a lot easier for that chaser to get up and contest. If you are struggling with your height and hang time, especially these shorter kicks, try using a soccer ball or a volleyball, something that's going to give you that true bounce. And also just allow you to really be really trust the ball drop because I think that's the hardest thing is being patient letting it get to that apex of the bounce so just with the soccer ball obviously we know this is going to give us that beautiful straight bounce so it's going to allow me to be patient here and just be slow getting up through the ball with a hard foot so one more That's it. Happy days. One thing that I would encourage playing around with is just your approach. So for the kickoffs, I use two steps. When I was taking conversions that are a little bit wider out, when I needed a bit more momentum, I took three steps. So with the kickoff, obviously, just that one little step back, come into the ball, looking for that uplift. When I'm looking to get through it, ground check, and then one, two, three and then when I came into the ball I just had slightly more energy going forward for my kickoff so let's try that kick so conversion kick one two three good strong ground check my momentum is going to be coming into the ball get a good strike good result take one so we've dropped back to the pocket in-game kick now. The key thing here is balance. So if we do get a bad pass, get that ball straight back to your kicking position as soon as possible. Above your head, too low. We need to get into that set position where we feel at home and we are in control of our body. So once we get this pass, I like to have my left foot forward right there so that I can take that small step and then get into my kick so that I have got a little bit of momentum. Good pass, G. Same again. Let's execute. I'm balanced. I'm slow. Trust my timing. Three points, you beauty. So say for instance we do get that bad pass, it does get wide and we have to readjust. So G pushes the pass, I have to get out here. Again, I've got to get my balance. If I'm out of control, I'm not going to get my strike. So even though the ball's out here, let's get into that kicking position. Look like a kicker so that we can execute our drop kick. Oh! <laughs> 